sit down. Shut up. You really need to sharpen your pencil right now? Are you guys ready? I've given my students a lot of tests and each and every time I give them a test, I always go through the exact same routine. All right, guys, are you ready? Let's do this. Now, once you have your test on your desk, please, please, please listen to me. There's absolutely no rule that says you need to do question number one first and then followed by question number two, question number three, question four. What I want you to do is please do all the problems you know how to do first. All the easy problems, the one that you read it and you're like, yep, I know exactly what to do here. Do all of those first. If it looks like the problem is going to take a little too much effort or you're not really sure how to do it, skip it. Come back to it later. There is nothing worse than not having enough time at the exam and realizing that there are probably 10 questions that you didn't get to that you actually know how to do. So that's what we're going to avoid right now is by doing all the problems we know how to do first. Now, what this is also going to do is it's help us going to start build our confidence because there's nothing better than taking a test and actually feeling good and remembering some things that we need to know on the test. You're also starting to prime your brain, getting it ready for those more difficult problems. And you're starting to recall the information that you've just spent your time remembering, practicing and studying for. Now, once you've completed all of those problems and skipped everything else, go back through the test a second time. Now we're going to work on those moderate problems. I kind of like to call these the 75%. You have a pretty good idea of what to do and how to do them, but it's going to require some steps and you might have some questions or maybe some issues recalling the information. Again, we want to focus on that 75% mark. You feel pretty confident, but we have some reservations. Now, depending on how much you know on the test, you could have completed almost everything on the test or maybe just a couple of questions. Regardless, it's now time to go back through the test one more time. And now we're going to tackle those most difficult questions. The ones that we originally looked at and said, I have no idea what to do here. What is this asking for? Or how the heck do I do this? Now, again, we don't want to feel bad if we run out of time on our exam and these are the only remaining questions we have. It's a good chance that these should fall around the 50 50 shot. You got a 50% chance of getting them right and a 50% shot of getting them wrong. But these are going to take a lot of brain power. These are going to take a lot of steps, hopefully at least up to this point, by already covering the easy and the moderate problems, you should have recalled a lot of the information that is now going to prep you for these more difficult problems. But if not, that's okay. If you're reading through the problem and you're still getting confused, skip it move on to the next difficult problem. I cannot tell you how many times that I have skipped a problem and gone back to it. And it took the third or fourth time that I read through the question and thought through the problem where it finally made sense. And I was actually able to solve the problem. So don't get discouraged if you don't understand it the first, the second, or the third time. Keep on working through the problems. Our goal here is to build momentum and to keep going, to keep trying. Now again, these are looking at around a 50-50 probability that you're gonna get them right or wrong. All right, now it's time to go back through our test and look for our mistakes. Now, I cannot tell you, me being one of those students, this was the make or break moment for me on the test. I would always make simple mistakes. Do not overlook the easy, the moderate, and the most difficult problems. Look through everything. So make sure you read through some of those questions. Go over some of the answer choices. Look at your work. Be careful. In the sake of time, did you leave out parentheses and then make a mistake? Go back over and just do a quick look over. I am notorious for making these type of mistakes. And when I had the time, I could usually always catch a couple of obvious mistakes I couldn't believe that I made. Now, we're not always going to have time and that's okay. That's just the reality of taking a timed test. But if you have the time, please do not just take your test and submit it. Go through the time, review your work because there's nothing more frustrating than not getting the grade that you wanted when you had time to check your work and you didn't do it. Now, if you want one little bonus tip that I can give you for the multiple choice test is to always look at the answers before you start doing the work. For free response questions, a lot of times those are going to be multi-step. Always look back to those previous answers and again, look at the different questions, how that free response question is being broken down to help guide what type of answers you're going to need for additional questions. Now, if you still have a little bit more time if on your taking your test, let me give you one last thing that I used to love to do. So what it's going to do is take all the problems that you were totally confident on, right? Those are the 100%. I know how to do these. Go ahead and add all of those up. Now, go ahead and add up all the problems that you were moderate that you did next, right? Those were their 75%. So take that sum and then multiply it by 75%. Because again, we're assuming that we're only going to get 75% of those correct. Then take the number of the most difficult problems and multiply it by 0.5. Because again, we're assuming we're only going to get 50% of them. Add all of those numbers up 
and then divide it by the total number of questions that you had on your exam. That should be what you expect to get on your test or exam. Now, if you're like me, you might want to add a little bit of a penalty, maybe a one to 3% penalty for making mistakes. But either way, get that number. And then when you get your exam back, it's always curious to see how close were you on what you estimated to what you actually got. If you did better than your exam, well then congratulations, you outperformed what you thought you're going to do. That's a great feeling. Even if you thought you got a set a C and you end up getting an A, that's awesome. If you get exactly where you're at, well, then that should be where you expected and you shouldn't feel that bad anyways. But if you get below what you expected, then there's definitely some things that we're going to want to review. And in the next video, what I'm going to do is show you exactly what you need to do when you get your answers back. Now, if you just want to see some more examples on how to be successful on your next test or exam, go ahead and check out my examples down below. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.